I, I will present um, preliminary results from this project uh, we are conducting. It's, it's a big team uh, we're conducting in, in um, Zambia, Kenya, Rwanda, South Africa, and starting now in Nigeria. Um, where we are looking at technical efficiency for HIV prevention services. Um, so the motivation for, for this project, I think most people will agree that it's important to think about the start implementing HIV programs with higher efficiency, um, maximizing the value for money. And when we start thinking about this uh, a couple of years ago, we found out we, we found that um, even though there was um, a lot of interest, a lot of costing projects around this topic, not a lot of information on what determines efficiency. So, however, uh, previous previous evidence suggested that there was a huge um, amount of heterogeneity in in, in average costs uh, for prevention services and potential waste of resources. So we aim to understand um, first w whether this was still the case and the current levels of efficiency, and second, what would be, what would our, if, if there is heterogeneity in terms of, uh, of cost, then what determines and what makes different more efficient than less efficient implementers. So uh, we have previously suggested that when thinking about optimizing um, prevention programs, it would be useful to think about these three dimensions of optimizing the allocation of resources. First, in terms of interventions, and in order to do that, um, effectiveness data is, is needed. Um, second dimension is uh, targeting the populations or groups where more uh, infections can be averted. And in order to do that, second level of optimization, um, epidemiological and behavioral data is, is needed. But then we suggested there's also a third level uh, that what we refer to as allocation among health inputs. And once we decide which interventions to implement, to where or to who, who for who, which populations, then we need to do that the most efficient way because we could do that in many ways. The same intervention can be implemented in different ways, some more efficient than others. And in order to optimize this level of implementation, um, it, we need a different type to, uh, of information. One that is related to um, performance in terms of efficiency. And that information usually comes from monitoring and evaluation systems, but it's not frequently used for, for this purpose. And um, we then suggested that this information is needed. And once this, uh, the levels of efficiency are um, detected, then the second step is to understand what are the determinants of different levels of efficiency. Hopefully, with that information, one could develop programs or interventions to motivate or facilitate uh, more efficient behavior. And this third level of optimization is that this project focuses. And the aim is to understand which characteristics determine or predict the most efficient performance, I will speak today only, I will present results from these two interventions, HTC and PMTCT. And in order to do that, um, the objective was to measure efficiency and then to estimate, estimate and understand the determinants of efficiency. <coughs> Um, we also hope that uh, with this information we would be able to provide specific recommendations <coughs> to improve uh, performance in this, in this sense. A um, few hypotheses behind this, this work. Uh, I'll mention these three uh, key ones. First, obviously, the first hypothesis is that we were expecting some level of variability in terms of unit cost across facilities implementing the same service. Second, that it would be possible to identify characteristics, uh, the role of what we define as determinants and constraints. And this distinction is important, uh, I think, because we define constraints or first determinants as those characteristics 
at the facility level that predict more efficient behavior, but specific characteristics that can be modifiable, things that can change across facilities and to which different interventions can, can, can be um, focused. The other types of characteristics that we uh, define as, uh, we, we name constraints, are characteristics that are also important for the costs, are also important determinants of efficiency, but those characteristics <coughs> cannot be changed. And the facilities have to operate with those constraints. There's nothing to do about them. Uh, that, that is the second hypothesis. And the third is that it was important to look at facility level performance. And by looking at that level of performance and understanding it, uh, we thought we could learn and, and provide recommendations. I will go very, very quickly through some aspects of the methods of this study. We have a poster describing in more, in more detail uh, the methods. And, and also, we can, we can share that poster if someone is interested. Basically, we measure efficiency for four uh, prevention interventions in four African countries, as I mentioned. I will not be presenting results from South Africa because we just finished a field work. Um, we measure all the outputs um, uh, for these specific interventions produced in one specific, uh, in the previous fiscal year, at a monthly basis. And we measured also all the inputs involved in producing those services in the same period of time. All this at the facility level, uh, month by, by month. And we also capture all these characteristics I described before, constraints and determinants. Again, at the facility level, most of them. These are just examples of uh, the what categories that we measure um, under determinants and constraints. Uh, in, in specifically, in terms of determinants, structure and governance at the facility level, training and the composition of staff, management characteristics, practices, um, levels and types of accountability, incentives and, sa and sanctions faced by the staff It are the most important uh, characteristics we, we use in order to capture this, this information. These are the, the categories of data that we capture. Uh, different, each square here represents one uh, specific questionnaire. It was a fairly complex process of data collection. And we use this micro-costing approach. We, we use a, um, a micro-costing at the facility level, I said one year. And two important things to mention. We, make a, we made an, an important effort to capture um, using an observational method, uh, the allocation of, of time uh, of different staff to the services we are interested in. And the second was uh, capturing quality. We also use different methods and, and different approaches to capture process quality. And also this idea of the cascade of services that um, um, I'm describing here. Uh, for each prevention intervention, we try to capture not only the first or one output, but different outputs along what we define as the cascade of, of services. We did this for, for all the types of interventions we studied. Um, I, will, I will skip directly to the, to the uh, results. Um, first, uh, I said we estimated the, the average cost. What we have here is on this side, HTC, and on this side, uh, PMTCT. This is the average cost per service. And in this case, is the average cost per service in the first moment or the first stage of the cascade. So this is the average cost per person tested. And each bar, it's one country. So you can see for HTC, it's between 11 and 20, $29. And uh, for PMTCT, it's something between 68 and $97. In both cases, staff is the, is the main um, uh, component in terms of percentage of the cost. And it's something around 70, 80, 90 in all cases for all countries. So these are very intensive in terms of labor um, services. So that's the first uh, result. Behind this variability in terms of average cost, there is something I want to show very quickly, which is um, a very substantial variability in terms of staff composition. So what you can see here, I will not go into detail, but uh, here again we have on this side HTC, and this is PMTCT. 
And each color, each bar here is one facility, and, and each color uh, uh, represents one different type of staff. We have medical staff, nurses, uh, and other types of staff. And what, we, what, what you can see here is that across countries, the, the height of the bars, that means the intensity of labor, and the colors of the bars are very different which means that different staff compositions are used in different countries to produce the same service. And I think this is a very promising area in terms of how we could optimize the production of these services. This is true for both HTC and PMTCT, high variability in terms of which staff is producing these services. Um, this is a very busy graph, but uh, let me walk you through, through it. Um, here, what we have is, again, the average cost. But in this case, we're adding the second and third moment in the cascade. Let's just focus on, on this side for now, HTC. So the first bars, again, we have the three countries. And the first bar is the same number as I just showed you before. This is the average cost per person um, tested here. 29, 26, 11 in the three countries. The second bar is the average cost per positive person identified by these programs. So the second stage in the cascade of services. For the same services, the same sample. In this case, what we have, it's 800, 200, and 2,700 in the case of Rwanda. Uh, so if the variability at the first moment of, in the cascade is important, in the second level of the cascade is even more important. And I think this is a, an important thing to consider when we're thinking about efficiency and measuring costs. Now, obviously, the difference between the first and the second bar, the, the, the size of that gap represents how many people a program has to test in order, in order to find one positive person, right? So something related to the um, prevalence of HIV in the population, which is the number we have here uh, in these white lines. These are the national prevalence in each of these countries. But most important is the prevalence, which is the red number here, not in the country, but in the specific sample or clients tested in that facility. And one can see how the difference, the bigger the difference between these two numbers, obviously the, 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 the lower the difference between these two bars. So more uh, effectively target, let's say, programs obviously are more efficient and at identifying HIV positive persons. In the case of Rwanda here, this uh, enormous gap between the two stages in the cascade, um, it's explained partially at least by this, um, the difference between the two prevalences. The prevalence in the sample of people who were tested in these facilities is significantly lower. It's half the prevalence than that in the national uh, at the national level. And that is something I think t talks about how effectively targeted these programs are. The final idea I want to discuss uh, with this graph has to do with, um, in PMTCT, it's the same. The first two is tested, uh, pregnant women tested, and then uh, positive women identified. But then the third stage in the cascade here is the number, the cost per, per woman on positive and on heart. And here, the gap represents, um, obviously, women who were identified positive but not started treatment. And the close, the, the shorter the gap means more effectively uh, putting women on treatment once they are identified positive. And there are significant gaps here that uh, are important to address. I will. Um, talk briefly about another aspect of, of efficiency that I want to share with you. What we have here, again, the column represents steps in the cascade, the first and the second. Here we have HTC, and here we have PMTCT. Each dot represents a facility. And what we have here is, again, in logarithmic scale, the cost, and this is the scale, or the size of the facility in terms of number of people tested during that year. First thing is the negative relationship in both steps in the cascade between these two variables. Uh, larger facilities, larger programs tend to be more efficient on average. 
but the second one, which is uh, the one uh, directly related to technical efficiency or efficiency, is the variability at a given size of facility. Even within one single, um, so the variability, the vertical variability across facilities, the same size of facilities, for instance, in this case, can have costs of 500 per, per person detected or 10 per person detected. That variability has to be at least uh, uh, some proportion explained by inefficiency. And that is where we, I think, have to learn uh, in terms of the determinants how we can improve this. Um, we started this uh, analysis of determinants using a uh, fairly uh, complex uh, um, approach. Um, and a few things we have learned so far. First, there is some evidence that economies of scale, this negative relationship between cost and scale uh, in the first moment of the cascade, but most important in the second moment of the cascade and in the third. I think this is, this is important. This is an important finding. Um, in terms of specific aspects of the management of the services, supervision seems to have a very important role in increasing efficiency. Uh, incentives and complex governing structures increase increased costs in, in our sample. And also, our results suggest that there is space to improve quality without increasing costs. In terms of pro, uh, what can we do with these results and what the, the recommendations can be, uh, I think we're, we're finding uh, our results are suggesting at least these three areas that I want to propose here. Measuring performance at the clinical level and revealing the disparities, this heterogeneity in unit cost, I think, is a very promising area. Uh, fairly simple management and training interventions. I think um, from, from what we are seeing, there is significant space to improve in this respect. And uh, this graph I show you looking at the staff composition, how different it is to produce the same service across facilities and across countries, I think it's another area uh, of prom uh, that is promising to increase uh, efficiency. Thank you. <laughs>